Hello everyone, my name is uh, Edward Garris and uh, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to uh, show you how to put together a succulent container. Uh, succulent containers are definitely meant to be a, a sun-loving type of container and I'm just going to show you all the different types of plant material that we can work with to create uh, a nice little garden effect. When it comes to planting a, a succulent garden, I do tend to use uh, a regular container mix but I'm also adding about a third sand, coarse play sand, uh, because you want to make sure that the soil drains as well as possible. Uh, and obviously in a container like this, you want to ensure that you have really good drainage, uh, because the last thing that succulents uh, can handle is when they're sitting in moisture. Uh, so you want to ensure that you've got really good drainage. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm going to sort of create a focal point uh, this is uh, Sansevera, and I'm going to create uh, a little bit of a, a height with, uh, with this. Uh, let's do two of those. So I've started with a little bit of a focal point. It's a little bit off-center, a little bit towards the back. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use uh, this Calancio. Uh, again, all, all succulents that require uh, very little moisture uh, once they're established. Uh, so I'm just going to take a little bit of the soil off and I'm going to plant it as such. So now we're gonna add some of the uh, Echeveras to it. And as I was saying earlier, that you've got a multitude of different colors uh, leaf colors uh, that are going to produce that sort of contrast for you uh, instead of using just straight flowers. So let's bring that forward. Okay, so then what we're going to do is we're going to add a couple of other forms of uh, Echeveria uh, into this container uh, just for that contrast in leaf color. This is a, a, a crinkly form, and you'll see that this one is actually uh, starting to produce the flower. Um, and they do have a really, really long bloom time. I'm going to put that one in front there. Uh, this is uh, a, a form of sedum, and you'll see that it's, uh, it's currently in bloom. So I'm just going to add that. That's going to sort of provide us with that little bit of color and that cascading type of form. Uh, so let's take um, the tricolored sedum, the variegated sedum, and incorporate that as well. So, I mean, you're going to provide a little bit of space, but I think that the overall look is going to be quite full right from the, uh, right from the onset. Uh, this is uh, called a chrysula. It's a, it's a lovely form. Uh, sort of very sculptural in terms of its overall look. So let's add that as such. Another form of uh, Echeveria, beautiful leaf color. Let's see if I can get it out of there. There we go. That towards here. This is a, a more of an upright form of, of sedum. Uh, it's going to give me some additional height. So what I'm going to do is I am going to plant it towards the, uh, the back end of the planter. Let's get a couple of those in there. And uh, again, you'll see the, the kind of color that you're able to create uh, with a succulent container as opposed to just the use of flowers. Uh, it's, it's sort of starting to take shape now. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're just going to continue adding uh, another form of, uh, of sedum to it, which is um, also in bloom right now. I mean, these things will bloom sort of sporadically throughout the entire season. Um, and like I say, that you're going to have a lot of contrast in color from the, uh, from the leaf itself. Uh, this is uh, another form of sedum that is currently blooming in, in pink. And what we're going to do is we're going to sort of put this towards the back and it's picking up really nicely. That pink tone is picking up really nicely on the purple tone of the, uh, 
the Echevera that we see there. And then we have uh, hens and chicks. Um, a very hardy type of uh, stone crop. And we're going to put that in towards the back. What we're going to do is, is once we've finished with the planting, we're going to uh, add a surface layer of pea gravel. Uh, the pea gravel is not only decorative, but it also does actually have a function. Uh, what we do is we are trying to ensure that uh, all of these different forms of succulents that we've used are not touching moist soil because I can guarantee you that that is probably the fastest way to, uh, to do damage to a succulent container. So what I'm going to do is wherever there is uh, soil that's showing, I'm going to cover it with the uh, pea gravel. And like I say, it does give it, it gives it a nice decorative sort of finish, uh, but it also does have a, a practical application in terms of uh, keeping that moisture down as much as possible. So here we have our finished product, uh, a succulent container that looks like it's been planted directly into the ground. It looks like a miniature garden onto itself. Uh, and we're going to keep a couple of different things in mind. A succulent container definitely requires as much direct light as you can provide it. So we'd be saying a minimum of probably five to six hours of direct light. Uh, once again, we see that sort of a decorative uh, pea gravel finish on top of the soil, which not only is decorative, but it will also ensure that the plant itself isn't sitting in moist soil uh, because root rot is definitely an issue with, uh, with succulents. And on that note, I think we just have to also remember that uh, we're watering uh, fairly infrequently once the plant material is established. I think that sometimes once a week would be more than sufficient uh, as, as far as watering it is concerned. Uh, something once again for full sun and something that you can enjoy and that is extremely low maintenance at the same time.